All right, Doc, so I got a bunch of blood work and we're gonna talk about RGCC. So what 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 is that and what are we looking at? So one of the things, you know, having been a doctor for so many years, is in longevity medicine, it's not just about what you can do in the areas of nutrition and exercise and hormones and supplements. Part of it is also about early detection, because the sooner you find things that are going to kill you, the more options you have available to you. And that's no matter what you're talking about. So since the number one killer of guys is, and women is heart disease, the number two is cancer. The issue with cancer is we don't have a lot of good preventative screenings. Matter of fact, um, of all the preventative screenings we do for guys and for women, that only covers about 30% of the cancers that kill people. So as of now, in traditional medicine, 70% of cancer that people are, are going to get, we don't know they get until they actually have it, that they become mm -hmm. symptomatic. And in that case, the problem is it's usually terminal. It's usually stage three or stage four by the time a cancer becomes symptomatic. About a decade ago, a, a Greece company and now an American company developed a process because technology got us there where we can actually start detecting cancer in your blood in the very earliest stages of cancer. So when what, what is cancer except it's a normal cell that has its DNA broken in a spot that controls the cell's ability to die. It's called apoptosis. And you want cells to be able to die when they get old enough and they become decrepit enough. You want them to die because if they don't, they can break in that one part that is the self-destructive series and then they can't die. And that actually is the definition of cancer is a cell that doesn't know how to die. So when the cancer start, no matter what tissue it is in the body, within a very short period of time, the proteins that are on the membrane of the cancer change. They're different than any other normal cell. And you can start detecting those markers in the blood almost immediately after, after the first or second cancer cell starts. And then so you can notice, like, you'll see if, I, if I've got any of these different cancer markers and then we can assess a protocol to get rid of them. That's one of them. That's one of the ways of doing it. Yeah, we look for these markers. But also if we wait just a bit, little bit longer in the progress, you're going to start seeing cells. Matter of fact, we used to think cancer didn't start throwing out metastatic cells until late in its development. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. Almost immediately, they're sending out these uh, metastasis cells, what they call cancer stem cells. But it's not very frequent because it's just a small cancer. So early on, you may detect just one cancer cell per milliliter of blood. But we have the technology to do that now. So we're talking about being able to detect cancer in every person months, if not years, before it even shows up on an x-ray, and definitely years, if not decades, before it becomes clinically significant. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a big game changer because when you attack, when you find out you have cancer just when the markers are changing, it's so brand new, it hasn't built any of the defenses yet that it uses to stay alive. So it's actually quite a sissy of a cell. It's actually pretty easy to get rid of it back then. So this company in Greece that I like is called RGCC Lab Centers. And what we do is we send them a sample of your blood and then they check it for all those markers. And then they put it in through a computer program and it looks for the cells. And if it detects markers or cells, it gives us a report. Now, the best report obviously is no markers, no cells. That means you sure. don't have cancer. And the first time you do this test, if, you, if it's negative and negative, you have an 84% probability of not having cancer. If you do this test every year, which is what I recommend people do, you do it a second year. If it's negative, negative, it approaches 100% confirmation you don't have cancer. And that's pretty cool when you can walk around and say, I don't have cancer. Now, there is a small caveat is that this type of testing does not test for brain cancers because of the barrier between the blood and the body, the blood brain barrier. These, these markers and these cells cannot get into the venous system. So that area we have to do different testing for like an MRI. Okay. But everything else, this will detect. All right. Well, um, I guess let's go through mine then, huh? Yeah. So like I said, the first thing we look at is we're looking at, do you have any cells? So here's your report. And the first thing that we're looking for is on the top line here, the number of cancer stem cells count zero. So they don't see any cancer cells per milliliter in your body, which is, the, which is the result you want to see. 
Yeah. Anything, anything under one or two is really low. Five is considered moderate. Above 20 is considered high. And that does somewhat linearly correlate to probably how advanced the cancer is in your body. Matter of fact, a lot of times when we have people who've had cancer and they've been declared cancer-free, I want to do this test to make sure the stem cells are gone too. And if they're not, there's different ways that we can help clear the microenvironment and clear the cells so that this falls under one because what they have after 17 years of study in Greece is they if your cell count for the cancers is under one. Now the probability of you getting recurrence is practically zero. So in, in your case, you've never had cancer and your cells are zero. It says it doesn't see cancer. Now. So this is what you said. This is like 84% reliable. 84% probability, 84% probability that you do not have cancer at this time. The 16% okay. left over is because if it was really, really, really early, this would miss it. And that's what they're counting. So by the time you do this the next year, you, we, you've had enough time that if it had been there the first year, we're going to catch it by the second year. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're looking down here is for the markers. And these are all these are called cell markers. Um, they're just, and each one of them is a little bit different and they represent different things. Now, these up at the top here, these represent markers that you would see with a blood cancer like leukemia or lymphoma but yours are all negative. Down here are all the ones that are with the solid tumors and you're all negative all the way down. Now, there's a couple of interesting ones because sometimes if some of these markers start showing up, we can tell where they're from because PSMA is a prostate marker. Um, VHL moot is a renal cell marker. Um, MUC is a breast cell marker. So there's sometimes when these markers show up, which are just the proteins on the surface of the cell, we can tell where they're coming from. But if any of them show up as dim or 25% or 50% or 75% or 100%, meaning all the cells are finding has that percentage of it, these many cells have percentages, we start getting a picture of what kind of cancer you probably have. But to be quite honest, from the blood test itself, it's not always clear where your cancer is. So if your markers are positive, but your cells are negative, you don't have a cancer because you have to have cells to see cells. But it's in the early kind of pre-cancer stage, which is what you want to do with these clients is clean up the environment, right? Clean up their diet, clean up the, whatever toxins they're introducing, stop, get those out, get them to stop doing those things. In general, adding supplements like Cursertin, green tea, capsitin, these are known to be anti-cancer supplements. One of the interesting things is people are always asking me, Dr. Savage, what are the five supplements everybody should take? And when people mention quercetin, I'm like, no, don't take quercetin regularly because you want the cancer, if it expresses itself, you want it to be sensitive to quercetin. So wait till you get a positive result. Now use the quercetin, knock it out, then stop the quercetin and hold that in your back pocket for a later day. Your you're defensive you yourself because you're taking it, right? So you want it to be sensitive? Correct. If you're going to develop a cancer, you don't want quercetin around because if quercetin is in your body, the cancer you're going to develop is going to be resistant to quercetin because if it wasn't, it couldn't, it couldn't happen. What you want is a cancer to be sensitive to quercetin or green tea or capsitin. So when people are like, oh, I like, I like to take quercetin, you know what? I like, there's a lot of other anti inflammatories out there that are really good. Quercetin, let's hold on to that one in your back pocket to hammer cancer cells early because. That by itself could take out all those markers in just a matter of months. So what should people take if they want to take some of this anti-inflammatory, but not like quercetin or something like that, that they don't want to desensitize? A great diet. Lots of vegetables, lots of colors. <laughs> I mean, it's like, let's, let's start with the basic, folks. Take a great diet. Okay. You got to have a great diet. You got to get rid of all the Western diet food. You got to get all the trans fats. You got, and please make sure that you're cleaning your vegetables and you're cleaning your fruits and you, you wash them well to get all the pesticides and toxins off the vegetables because they're everywhere now in the United States. I mean, it's sad that the United States is only is one of the countries in the world that allows us to put all this stuff in our fields on our food, where people like South America, European Union, it's not allowed. 
which is why you know about people going to Italy and they're like, I ate five, I ate all the meat over there, I had all the bread over there, and I came back five pounds lighter. Of course, because they don't carry all those toxins. So the way the best way to avoid cancer is avoid the toxins, but eat lots of healthy vegetables, lots of good fruit, and just stay away from the toxins. That's me in Greece with the pizza. Yeah, I mean, but that's the same thing. You can eat the pizza in Greece. You can eat the pasta in Italy. You can eat the bread in France. And all the clients that I've ever known, and I've been doing this for 40 years, they come back lighter. And they're like, why is that happening? Because it's in the food. Or in this case, it's not in the food. Yes. Yeah. What, well, let's do this again in a year, Joey, and just make sure that everything's going well, because cancer being the second cause of leading cause of death in the United States, we're not winning the war on cancer. Um, we've not made progress. They say, you know, we have all these immunotherapies, but for all the advances we've made, more people are getting cancer at an earlier age that is more severe type of cancer. And that's from the toxic environment we're living in. That's why we're not winning the war on cancer because we can't get in front of it. So the one way to get around cancer is get it when it's early, detect it now, wipe it out now, and then keep moving forward. All right, cool. Well, I'll, I'll continue with... Okay. My healthy lifestyle. <laughs>